Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now today we're going to take a look at the Meg Z890 Unify uh, X. If you're wondering where the Ace is, I have actually already covered it. It was in my press kit that I received from MSI. So if you'd like a really good look around the Ace motherboard, then I would urge you to go and have a uh, look at that video. Now with the Unify, I've had a quick scan online and I've not seen any preview prices live for this yet, but we will see how it pans out uh, long term. Anyway, round the back of the board, ultra power. Now, uh, it's got uh, 20 110 amp phases, uh, plus then there's plus one, plus two, plus two. But that's pretty much all the information that I've got from MSI. Some other people have been saying about why am I just showing the board? Where are the benchmarks? Uh, why can I not talk to you about temperatures? All the boards are still under NDA until the 24th of October when the CPUs launch. I'm allowed to show you the uh, boards for a look around, but I can't talk to you about any performance yet, but we will cover it in depth when we are allowed to. And I think the whole point in us at the moment is just to try and have a look at the options that we've got available and then come back later uh, to have a look to see if the performance is gonna back up the uh, price tag and our overall expectations. Now I'm going to be expecting the uh, Unified to come in above the price of the Ace. The Ace I've looked today is uh, pre-order price is 649. I'm expecting this to come in around that sort of price, maybe 7, 749. It is slightly more overclocking focused as this does show because this is a little magic box of tricks that you can connect to the motherboard and you can, uh, it's a, there's a retry button for when you're overclocking there. Overclock fail save, clear CMOS, power button. You can also turn the base clock on and off, up and down. That's actually the little cable that goes with it. You do get uh, your Wi-Fi and then you do get the non-overclocking stuff, which are your RGB extension cables and some SATA cables. But beyond that, in the box, the only other really interesting thing is uh, MSI now have a cable which goes on the side of the board. It's a little proprietary connector. It's in addition to the front mount. Uh, connectors but underneath it you do get a, um, a PWM cable, your front mount connectors and then also a 3-pin ARGB. Uh, it could just be something to help keep your system tidy but I would assume that with this board it's going to be something to keep your system tidy in a more gaming focused build rather than someone that's building a test bench just for overclocking. Okie dokie. So First and foremost, and it's the thing that instantly strikes me with this board, is when you come up to the top left hand corner, we'd expect the eight pins to be, there's nothing there. I, I will say as well that when you do have a look around, there's no uh, PWM header there or anything like that. When we do come across though, it is fairly uh, instantaneous that the heat sinks, although they are heat piped, they are uh, just large chunks of aluminium. I did really prefer the individual um, sort of like very fine bladed heat sinks that they put on the ACE. They'll be much better for cooling in the, in the long run as well. Uh, eight pins at the top, not shielded around the outside. No metal shielding on there at all, which uh, I think is something that should be there for a higher end board. It can't add that much uh, extra cost in. CPU fan, and then you do get a, uh, well, it's, it's a double header because it says pump and sys one and then you get another uh, system fan here. This is the proprietary header that I said to you about for the fan out cable, which does the front panel, the ARGB, and the PWM, and that can all wrap around the back. You can see here that we do have some voltage monitoring points for if you've got a multimeter, and then the LED readout, uh, which is just the four normal ones, I'm sure you'll all be fully aware of it, but you have uh, CPU, DRAM, VGA, and then uh, boot. And then underneath that, you've got your full poster readout, which obviously allows us to fine tune, well, fine analyze any possible issues with the posting process. Um, you do have a uh, 24 pin, but obviously, but they're all solid pins, which is a nice positive point. And you do have another six pin underneath. One thing I will say though, is you obviously do have a, uh, one to help with charging on the board when it comes to USB-C, but there is another one down here which is marked as being for PCI Express. So we'll have to look at that in more depth when we're allowed to really dig into the board. 
then there is a uh, horizontally mounted USB 3.2 Gen 2 and you do get a further couple down here but this is obviously for your USB-C front panel header these are for your normal USB-A's and this is the first of the boards that I've seen with six SATAs there's been a lot of hoo-ha from people saying that there's not enough SATAs on the board I'm going to be honest though we would have to look at a later date to see what the block diagram was because I'm going to tell you right now these won't all be completely independent and they will share bandwidth with someone else so the fact that there's six there is a good thing if you need them all but I'm going to say that 99.999% of you out there really aren't going to give a monkeys. There is a random out of the way NVMe up the top here. We've also got another one further down directly underneath the CPU and because it's uh, MSI their mounting um, procedure is actually really easy and it's much easier when the board is flat but it's completely toolless. Once you get it latched and pushed in, it's really easy. And then the bottom part of the board literally comes off like that. And you can see there's a further four underneath. So we have six available NVMEs in total across this board. Again, we'll talk more in depth about um, bandwidth and all of that sort of thing when we can do during the full review. I'll make sure to cover it. But as we come down, if I zoom you in, we have an ARGB header here. This is the first one that we've seen on the board uh, so far. There's one there. There is actually one further along, just on the side over here. So you do get two, but obviously you get one with that proprietary cable at the top as well. So there are three in total. Three fan headers with this being uh, marked as pump and uh, sys fan as well. We've got two there. There's also another header here, which is for water flow, which is a nice addition. You can also see that you've got two USB 2s, your front panel uh, audio, and it all looks rather lovely. When we do come up, what we can see are those 20 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 again. Uh, 110 amp phases and that's something to keep in mind as well because the difference between the VRMs may be something that long term you are going to want to keep an eye on. What we can also see which is kind of strange especially with the locations it does have a PCI Express 1 header there. Now we really really don't see these very often. Um, but there is just nestled, hidden system fan four just in there. Um, I really hate the uh, headers when they are hidden down there like that. I know some of you might want to fit your rear 120 millimeter fan to it, or maybe the heat sink for your CPU. But I just think it makes things unnecessarily uh, messy because you can see the cable. I'm very much a let's hide the cables guy. Round the back and uh, the first thing that strikes me are the PS2 ports. People are going to scream at why do we need that, it's so old, but it, it, overclockers love them and it's just because it, it does help you get into the BIOS easier. Some um, keyboards out there, you, when you smash and delete it just doesn't get uh, recognised by the system fast enough and you can't get into the BIOS. These you have zero problems with. I've actually still got a really, really old USB 2 keyboard where you can't even see the delete button on it anymore because I use it so much when I'm testing. Um, and I expect there are lots of other people out there, but when you have things like this, you don't have any problems. Wi-Fi 7 and it's the quick release connectors. Down the bottom, you can see you've got a mic in, mic out with gold plated connectors uh, just inside it. The camera's picking it up lovely, so you don't need to worry. Uh, 5G Ethernet, two USB 10Gs, and then we move up. You can see there's a USB 10G on the C, but then we've got the flash BIOS, the clear BIOS, and then the smart button that you can set within the BIOS and in the software to do whatever you want. It could be reset, could be you know many other things. Then you've got your Thunderbolt, which is also uh, good for charging there. And then another USB uh, 10G-C, but then six 10Gs on the A. So lots of connectivity around the back, and there's just one more thing for us to look at, and that is the lighting. But there's not a great deal of it. 
I'm going to say that you're not going to need a great deal of it if you're using this for overclocking anyway, but you can see that it just highlights just on the other side of the mirror where the dragon is. I'm going to go and be bold though. And even though it's an overclocking board, I feel like they've missed an opportunity for a really lovely feature where you could have had some lighting along here, some lighting up on these sides as well, just to have been able to have followed it all of the way through. And I think that small touch would have made a rather large difference on this board. Um, and the only thing that I haven't really drawn extra attention to, and I'm probably going to assume that people are screaming at the screen, and that is why does it only have two dim slots? Uh, that's going to be to keep the traces uh, smaller and shorter, which means you'll be able to overclock your memory higher. Um, it doesn't have the NitroPath technology that Asus does, but with a high-end overclocking board, it's normally the two DIM boards that uh, work better. It's also why well, you'll be surprised to find out there are a lot of overclocking records actually uh, broken for memory on ITX boards because it keeps all those traces so much smaller that uh, it does allow uh, higher frequencies to be run and maximised on those boards. Anyway, the MSI Unify X, there we have it. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment. Head over to the website if you'd like to see more details. I'll be back with another video for you very soon.